Hello bird friends, it's time for Avian First Aid, Episode 7. I was leaving for work the other day and I left, dropped my hat inside the aviary and I forgot about it. So Tika decided he was going to dissect it for me. You can see how he literally takes it apart seam by seam, strips it down to its parts, and then starts to chew up the parts. He's playing down here on the couch. Pieces. <laughs> Hi. This episode, we're going to start covering common injuries and specific emergencies. The most common injury would be bleeding. And the most common site for bleeding would be a blood feather. So the next section is I was going to go over some common emergencies. Um, and I was kind of going to do each one with three things. First of all, how to assess or recognize it, then what action to take, and then what could have been done possibly to prevent it from happening. We most commonly probably see as an emergency is bleeding, um, and the most common site that we would that we would have bleeding from is a blood feather. I'm going to go over what a blood feather is for people who don't know. Um, when a bird molts, their old feather falls out, a new one comes in, and when it first comes in, it looks like a little porcupine quill um, because it has to have a shaft for the um, soft feather stuff to come through the skin. Once it comes through the skin, it sits there as a porcupine quill for anywhere from five to seven days. Then the shaft starts to flake off and the feather starts to open. For that feather to, to receive nutrition, it has to have blood flow down the shaft of that feather to make it grow. Once a feather is mature, that blood recedes and you have a hollow shaft of the feather, which is why you could use feathers in the old days to hold ink and, and write um, as a pen. <clears throat> The downside of that is that during the time this is happening, the blood is flowing through um, a conduit that stays open. In a regular blood vessel, if you cut your blood vessel, the blood pressure drops, and because it's soft tissue, it collapses, which aids in having the blood <coughs> clot and the area is small. If you cut a blood feather, the um, shaft of the feather stays open doesn't collapse and that's why blood feathers can be dangerous because they tend to be poor at clotting because it's such a large opening. So you'll get a clot in the end, the bird will move, the clot will fall off and it'll bleed again. Now all the feathers on the body are formed from blood feathers but when we say the blood feathers what we classically mean is the large feathers of the wing and tail. The other ones can be damaged but they're usually not large enough to cause any significant bleeding. So when we say we have a bleeding blood feather, we usually mean that it's one of the large feathers. Um, but don't think that a blood feather is an abnormal structure. It's a normal structure. And what we're aiming to do with blood feathers is have them mature into normal feathers so there isn't blood in the shaft anymore because then they will sit there for six months and be a nice, beautiful feather. So when, when they're coming in, the shaft is also not quite as thick and tough as when the feather gets old, so it's more prone to injuries. The, the type of injury you get could vary from just a little split that is vertical to broken right off. If it is a vertical split, most of the time what we try and do is we try and save that feather. And the reason is that if you pull the feather out, then you get another blood feather growing in and you're starting the process all over again. So what we're aiming to do is A, stop the bleeding, but B, have there not be a blood feather there anymore, which will happen in a couple of weeks if you can maintain this one. So it's a, if it's a vertical slip along the shaft of the feather, usually you can clean the blood off and just seal the slit in the shaft with surgical glue or even crazy glue. It's not sterile, so you can do, if there's a little split, put it together, take the blood off, seal it, let it dry, and I usually do three applications. I let it dry, I do one more. I let it dry, I do one more. Try not to stick all the other feathers and yourself to the bird, um, which usually means you need a holder, right? And 
surgical glue and or crazy glue does not work well when it's wet. So you do have to swab the blood off first. Um, hence your gauze that you have in your emergency kit here. So you can pick out your gauze and then you can hold your feather, hold the gauze on to get rid of the blood and then put your glue on. Once you get the first seal, you won't have to do that, but when it's actively bleeding, um, surgical glue does not stick if it's wet, including blood. So um, you have to have it dry first. So you can seal those, and usually if you seal them up, then the feather can continue <coughs> growing in another week to have a nice feather. Say it's not a vertical slit. Say it's right across, the rest of the feather's gone. You have this little piece like this that, that keeps bleeding. Um, it, because the conduit's holding it open, it's going to be hard to stop. So what you have to do is remove that shaft of the feather. And the way you do that is you take your forceps. So these are curved. So you take a pair of forceps. These are my favorite ones. And your, here's your feather shaft sticking out. Grab it along the length of it because then you can get more purchase on it. And when you go to pull it, your forceps are less likely to slip off and you're less likely to break it. If you grab it this way, you're probably going to snap it off. Um, and then you'll be starting with the shorter one to keep going with. And as you're pulling it, what you want to do is you want to hold the skin right where the feather comes out of it. Because if you pull this and, you, and you're not supporting that skin, the skin of the follicle is quite delicate, you might get the feather out and rip the skin. So what I'm doing is I'm holding the skin, my forceps are holding the feather, and as close as you can get to the skin without pinching it is the best. If you hold it on the end and the bird wiggles, then you might break it off. So if you can get it close to the skin, as much um, surface area of the feather as you can in your forcep, clamp down, and then pull straight out. After you've done that, you now have the feather follicle, which is the soft tissue part of the vein, but it now can collapse because you're you've removed that firm bit. Hang on, hold it because you want pressure to stop the bleeding. It's still bleeding inside there. So hold it for one minute and I time it because it always seems like it must have been a minute already and it's probably only been 20 seconds. Then let it go and, and watch it. Most of the time if you pluck the feather and you hold it for one minute, you're done. That's all you need to do. <clears throat> if it's still bleeding, hold it again for another minute. Keep doing that for five times. If in five times it does not stop, then you're gonna to need to do something else. I had a macaw come in once, we had to take blood, blood feathers out, and what we ended up doing with him is we held the follicle shut and we actually sealed the follicle, but we used surgical glue because it had to be sterile because it was inside the follicle. <clears throat> that would be the, the thing of choice to do as opposed to cautery because the surgical glue, as the follicle exfoliates, it will just fall out, and in a couple weeks, it will be gone and it won't damage the follicle. If you try to use cautery, like a, a hot temp cautery, and you burn the follicle, then you then you burn the site that the new feather is going to grow from, and you may get an abnormal feather, no feather at all, a feather that grows crooked because you've damaged the way it grows. So the ideal thing is, um, if you can't get it to stop bleeding, to, to seal it with surgical glue, and that that works quite well. So the next most common injury would be toes and legs. We'll cover that next time on Avian First Aid. Guess I'll have to go buy a new hat. See ya.